Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a great day. We're starting off this episode once again in the hot air balloon mob farm, which has still been doing really great, but I actually <laughs> logged in with my camera account the other day just to see if there was anything going on in the mob spawner while I was AFK above the balloon. And it turns out that when we were having monsters kind of show up in here previously, I kind of took a half and half approach to the inside of this. I thought I'll try half with carpet and half with the torches and see which side can really make a difference. See like where monsters are starting to spawn in here. It turns out that if a skeleton is up there or, or any other kind of mob really, if a skeleton is up there and has already decided to pathfind to a different block in the mob spawner, usually it'll spawn like somewhere in the middle here and then it'll try to walk towards the outside. It can actually get stuck on the water streams for a little bit and then when it drops, it still has that momentum and the momentum of it walking carries it down to one of the blocks around here instead of it dropping straight down. Like 99% of the time they drop straight down, but every... Every so often, the 1% of these skeletons or zombies or creepers will actually pathfind to a block down here and will actually make the landing. So we have two options for dealing with this. We can either just widen this hole out even further so there's absolutely no chance they can drop onto one of these blocks, or we could just do what I'm gonna do today and pop down a bunch of blocks to basically create a tube that leads up to this bit here. And that's going to prevent the mobs from dropping down onto here because they'll have nothing solid to fall onto. They'll just fall straight down into the hole. They won't be able to get a grip on any of these walls. Now that might affect spiders in the off chance that spiders happen to spawn in here with that kind of momentum, but I think they should be okay. And I'll take out some of the carpets and stuff that I placed around here. So then I should be able to place the concrete powder all the way around the outside of this. And I'm doing this with black concrete powder mostly because it can create a a bit of an illusion of darkness if we're looking up into this but I could do the same thing with glass or basically anything else really so I'm just going to place a bunch of this before we get started today and we're going to be placing a little bit more concrete powder in today's episode because I want to use it to plot out some of the city buildings in the town of Founders Forge which we're going to be building down there by the blacksmith's guild. And there we go, that is all taken care of. And if you look up at it from this angle, you might be able to notice that there's two gray concrete powder in there because I ran out of black concrete powder. But aside from that, that looks pretty good. You can kind of see that there is something built inside of there, but for the most part, it is fairly dark. And I like that. I like the fact that it kind of travels up to the inside of the balloon. From most angles, you won't even see that anyway, but that's just going to make sure that none of the mobs end up on the inside of the balloon. They're all just going to drop straight down from the mob spawner, hopefully onto these hoppers, occasionally onto that ring of Anders site, which again is a, a bit of a design flaw. But like I said before, I'm not in this for maximum efficiency. I'm in it for stuff looking good and giving me extra gunpowder. And see that creeper still died on the top of there. So at least the most destructive mobs we can possibly spawn in here are all going to die regardless of the height. And as you can see, even though I've been taking gunpowder out of this chest pretty regularly, we still have nine stacks and a little bit extra gunpowder in here at all times. The bones are piling back up. The string is piling back up. We have a little bit of zombie flesh to trade. It's all going pretty well. So today we're going to do a little bit of city planning and that's why the concrete powder is here because I want to outline some of the buildings that are going to be built around here in this nice brightly colored material that's nice and easy to remove. If you think about concrete powder basically has the same properties of sand. If I've got an efficiency shovel, I can just completely demolish this whole thing. Some people like to wireframe using different colors of wool or stone or something like that. And stone is great if you've got uh, haste too, but I like something that I can remove more or less instantly with a shovel like so. So that's why I tend to use concrete powder for this. Obviously the problem with concrete powder is it's affected by gravity. So if you want to build stuff in 3D, it can be a little bit trickier, but if you're just laying out the the foundations, the outlines for this, then concrete powder is nice and easy to do that with. So I've been trying this out a little bit around here, deciding to shape some of these houses and buildings to the outlines of the paths that we set down in a previous episode. And I think this is going to be kind of fun. I've decided to split this into two separate buildings, whether these are houses or whatever, I'm not entirely sure yet. But I like the idea of maybe these being kind of even four buildings, if I grab some more concrete powder and separate them down the middle, like so. Maybe if we had some shops or something here, if there was, say, like a bakery and a butcher's here, and then on the opposite side, there was something else. I've left little gaps here and there for potentially having doorways and stuff like that in, but we could always just 
you know, move some of this stuff around as we see fit. The concrete powder is nice and easy to take up and put down so we can adjust these outlines as we as we want to. But I'm also going to be doing some more stuff around here and I want to add a few little infrastructure touches to this place to give it a little bit more height and depth because that's an aspect I tend to not really build into Minecraft towns all that much and it's one that I think is neglected so it's something that I really want to improve about my building style. Now I'm looking at this bit here and thinking it might be fun to build a bridge going from the top of this wall over to maybe a walled off section over there and have the the height of this wall on this side as well. So maybe we have a bunch of buildings that are built on a kind of raised section quite like this. There's a bridge between the two, but that gives you an archway to go underneath if you're walking along this path. And we can build something like that out of stone brick. It can be quite similar to the style of bridge that we have over there linking the farming area to the industrial district, but I think that can be a smaller version of that, I suppose, and just have these kind of continuous archways going over here, leading to a larger section up this way. And of course, that can have its own staircase around here, so we could put in some more infrastructural touches that way. But that's the kind of stuff that makes a city feel a little bit more organized and a little bit less like a random collection of buildings, is putting in walkways and paths and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to grab some stone bricks and then give this a go, but I'm going to remove the log here and we'll probably flatten out some sections of this in preparation for that. So now in addition to the concrete powder, I've grabbed a little bit of stone of all different types. We've got some andesite, some cobblestone, stone bricks, and regular stone in there. I might also throw a bunch of these in a furnace to make them crack stone bricks. And we've got some dirt and grass for terraforming this section over here because I'm gonna build it up using dirt and grass to begin with, much like the rest of this area. And then we're going to maybe make it a little bit more city-fied if we want to put some stone bricks and stone into the ground for like, you know, pathway, paving blocks, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna grab a few bits and pieces of this to start with and we'll plot out where exactly we want these arches to go. I'm thinking if we push this wall back a little bit just to give it that flat start, but then each wall section goes one, two, three, four, five, and then we put the archway there. That kind of feels a little bit too wide to me, so maybe we should just stick to three in the middle and then if we have one, two, three, then we can probably move the path around a little bit and just have a three block gap here where people could walk through. So one, two, three to there and one, two, three to here. And I think about there is where the opposite wall is going to be. So we'll pop in a few blocks here just to be sure. And this is actually going to feel quite deep, I think. So if we want to put it five blocks long along here and then each of these archways, presuming that the archways are going to be evenly spaced will be about there. So we need to push this back a little bit. We just need to make a couple of small adjustments to the city infrastructure here to fit in this design. Yeah, so we have a series of archways coming out from this wall. I can't figure out if I want them to be four or five high. Let's start with four and see how we get on. Does that feel, that feels just a little bit too low for me. So I'll boost this up a little bit higher over here and start that about there. Yeah, that should be fine. And I think we can probably just turn this into like a little bit of a raised walkway so you actually go up a couple of steps to get to here. Now to form our archway shape, we're going to add in a few blocks behind here just to shape it out a little bit. We'll probably add in some slabs and stuff as well. Maybe we could even convert little alcoves in the wall like this into a fountain type of thing. So all we need to do for that would be to put a stair block in there and waterlog it with a hole in front like that. And then those could just run down into the hole. We could maybe even pave the hole a little bit just around this with, uh, with stone bricks or andesite maybe. We'll put andesite in here as an alternative, make a couple of polished blocks of that just to give it a bit of differentiation from the stone brick around it. And with a waterlogged stone brick stair in there, there we go, yeah. I, I think paving it around there like that feels a little bit more, I don't know, sanitary, I guess, if this is going to be flowing water that's out there in the city. Okay, I think I like where this is going. It was looking a little flat for me, so I've actually pushed this next recess in the wall one block back. So you've got the same pattern, but repeated a block further back just with a few stairs kind of leading in there and it sort of stops halfway there. So this bit looks like it's supported, but it's actually just kind of pushing back into the next area. I'm gonna continue the wall over into this section because this is the one that's actually going to be the tunnel through to the other side of this footbridge. We might add a little bit more detail to the tunnel in a minute, but for now, I think we can probably just build this as a relatively simple archway through here. We could even, and here is where my brain starts firing on all cylinders, we could even have an archway here leading to a section of the wall that maybe has a shop or like a hole in the wall kind of thing in. Maybe we'll give that a try, that sounds like fun. 
So at first glance, this seems just like an ordinary archway through to the opposite side of here with a bridge over the top that people could walk through. But if you turn to the right once you get in here, and maybe we can obscure the doorway a little bit by putting a few like logs and stuff around, maybe like a crafting table or two, some crates, that kind of stuff. So it looks like the back sort of storage area for a shop or something like that. And we've got a button on the wall, a nice discreet button that you can use to open this door. And then this could lead out into a shop that's sort of underneath the main foundations of the rest of the houses that we're going to be building on this side. I like that. Again, it gives a little bit of depth and it uses negative space. The stuff that maybe you wouldn't necessarily see at first glance, the stuff that's a little bit off the beaten track here. Okay, now with a little bit of adjustment here, I decided that this was just looking too stone bricky. There was so much gray going on that I felt it needed something else to bring it out. And I thought, considering that there is so much other wood and wood is kind of used as a structural block in a lot of this stuff, it feels kind of foundational, what with all of these wooden kind of support pillars happening here. I thought surrounding this with wood didn't seem like such a bad idea. I wanted the archways to be a little bit darker and the dark oak wood has kind of fit that bill a little bit. Now it is a little strange that there is water coming out from either side of these and with this being a mainly wood kind of thing, but I put in a spruce trap door here just to kind of add in a little bit of texture, a little bit of a deep recess. And that almost feels like you're tapping a giant barrel of water. And I don't know quite how I feel about that, but I almost sort of like it, I don't know. It's an interesting feature, and I think it looks a lot better than it did before without, without this being stone brick, with it being a different type of material. We could even substitute in something that's maybe got a little bit less texture or something that's a different color, something that maybe feels like, like a terracotta or something like that, something that feels a little bit more plain and a little bit more structural, perhaps. But I think for now, at the very least, it's better than having the entire thing be made out of stone brick. It looks so much better from a distance is the main thing. And the supporting pillars for these archways I thought needed a little bit of extra depth further up, so I added in a stone brick stair and some logs on top of that, which actually allows me to continue the pattern of having these logs support the wall in places as well. It's just that this one is raised up on this little kind of attachment to the pillar here. And as you go through here on the right, I've changed this area up a little bit because we already had some of the dark oak wood around. So I added a chest here. We've kind of added in a couple of little pathway blocks and stuff like that. This area here, I'm still not sure if I want to do anything with that or just fill it in, but it's nice to have something underneath the archways here. And as you go up this stair, you can actually turn left to get up onto the walkway up here. And to avoid the fact that this was all stone brick because it's all of the structural stuff for this archway down here, what I ended up doing was doing an alternating pattern of three rows of dark oak wood slabs and then some stone brick slabs. And the main reason for the stone brick slabs in the first place was that this section here needed a ceiling that was above the height of those stairs. Otherwise it would feel too kind of enclosed. So yeah, I added in the slabs there. And when I came up here, I thought, you know what? We could probably just alternate this design, put slabs on top of the walls so it still has that full block height. So you can't just walk up and over the parapet. And I really like this. I think this is coming together very well. We've added in a longer wall on this side as well. And that's the start of where the kind of foundations of this part of the city are going to be. So it gives this whole area a kind of more enclosed feel, which makes it feel more cozy. And I like that a lot. That's one of the things I want to achieve with the city is the feeling that the infrastructure is working to change the feeling of the space to kind of hem this whole courtyard in and make it feel a little bit more private. Now, one thing I want to do is actually lay out this area here because I think the area next to this wall is an ideal place to have some kind of rustic market stalls. So I'm going to use the concrete powder to lay those out a little bit. And they almost feel perfectly in line with like the wall here. They don't have to go all the way back to the wall, but look at the, the way this path is divided up a little bit. There's almost these little four or five block long sections that would be perfect for some market stalls. And we've got some some great opportunity to put those in, especially if this is going to be a more commercial area. We've got the Blacksmiths Guild there for people who want to make big purchases. But like I said, if this is going to be like a bakery at a butcher's, maybe a couple of other smaller shops, then having market stalls here where people are just selling the occasional things we can have, like, you know, a farming stand where they can sell, you know, fruit and veg and that kind of stuff. So each of these being its own individual market stall seems like an ideal sort of thing. And it can end right here next to this little kind of lava breach where this magma is bubbling up from under the ground. And yeah, I think this is going to work out really well. We can have three or even four market stalls in here, maybe four if we want to, you know, bring these together a little bit and have them kind of rubbing shoulders in this spot. So how about, yeah, we'll, we'll bring this in ever so slightly. There we go. Market stalls or the spaces for them anyway. Yeah, we, we have a little bit of room to work with here. We can maybe even widen this one out a little bit more if we pushed it back one more block. But I like the idea that these were all sort of staggered 
in one block little sections here. And I think that looks really great. I think it's it's nice to have a pop of color in here more than anything else because this whole place has been just an open field with gray walls and stuff around it for a while. So it'd be good to pop in some stuff like this. We're probably not gonna use concrete powder at all for the actual, you know, the materials for the stall itself, but this is an opportunity to bring in some wool and make some nice colored awnings and stuff like that. I've even had a thought to maybe use beds for something like that because they've got a really nice texture underneath. If I if I take out the yeah, if I take out the blocks underneath the bed like so, you can actually have beds suspended in midair. You need blocks to place them on, but not blocks to uh, to kind of have it rested on permanently. And underneath that, it's got this nice kind of wooden texture. And on top, you can have different colors, so you can have like a red and white stripe effect almost. I think we might give that a try for the the awning of one of these kind of canopied market stalls over here. And the next step really is to start building out this area of the city. We're actually gonna have a giant raised platform here, I guess, because I think I want to extend this, the sort of brick pathway area that we've got going on right now to basically the entirety of this area that you see roped off with the road. Yeah, I think I think we're actually gonna extend this all to this height. And even over there by the waterfront, we're gonna have a, a big wall with, I guess, staircases and stuff in sort of stuff like, like that, where it's, maybe it takes a little bit of a walk around to get up onto here, but then we can have shops and stuff lining this area and all looking down towards this section here. Maybe this row can be where some of the fancier shops are in the city, that kind of thing. But I, I like the idea of extending this all out. Now, how are we going to do this? The approach tends to vary a little bit. And I am the type of person who rather than light this whole area up, I tend to fill stuff in, mainly because then there's fewer surprises when I end up inevitably digging out the basement for one of these shops. Or like I said, with this door over here kind of coming into a basement area down here, I can just dig it all back out again. It's not such a big deal. But other people who prefer to save on resources and stuff like that will probably tell you to light up the area underneath here a little bit and just leave this open because it means you don't have to spend all of the time and effort and blocks placing all of the dirt and stuff that you want to put in here. You can do this with dirt, stone, whatever, you know, whatever kind of filler material you happen to have on you. But yeah, I've been starting to do that a little bit because I know inevitably I'm going to dig out a basement and then I'm going to have a two or three block drop underneath here and I'll need to kind of peel it back up if I want to go back to the surface and do some other stuff. So I'm thinking ahead a little bit there and planning for what I will eventually do with this space. And I kind of think I want to fill some of this stuff in. It's going to take a little longer than the average build would, but I think I'm going to thank myself for it later. You guys don't have to do this though. This is totally a personal preference thing and probably one that doesn't make a great deal of sense to most people. The main thing is just to make sure that mobs and stuff don't spawn down here in the darkness, because not only is that going to potentially affect the rates of any mob spawners that we build in the area if they are within range, but it's also going to mean an unpleasant surprise when you come back to this area and find this a spot that you haven't lit up that is just teeming with mobs. If it's the only place that mobs can spawn during the day, then you're going to end up with about 10 or 15 creepers down there and you're not going to have a good time. Now, am I going to fill all of this in now? No, because even though I have a lot of dirt, I don't know if I have this much dirt, <laughs> so I'll probably end up filling it all in later, but I probably will fill most of it in. Now, we're going to extend the wall out a little bit further around here. I think we'll probably have one more panel of this wall kind of ending about there, and then it's going to take a bit of a right turn. Let's grab a few more logs, let's go up there, yeah, perfect, and then I'm just gonna mark out the boundary of the wall as it heads off in this direction. You know what, actually, no, I might not put this wall there. I might leave that open for another market stall that can just be around the corner, and that way we can have the wall end here instead of there, but it can still come out in these three or four block long sections and yeah, it'll meet up with the corner over there and then we can bring it around. Okay, not too bad. I think I think we've got we've got a good structure for this area. But we can keep it coming out along here like so. Yeah, a couple of market stalls in here wouldn't be too bad actually. And then once we have this coming out a little bit further this way, yeah, I think that's I think that's good because then it'll stop at the end of this section here and then we can just carry the wall on along and around. It's gonna give this section a really interesting shape, actually, which is cool. It's better than better than just having it be a big square block. It feels a little bit more organic. And once again, we're following the shape of the path with this wall. <laughs> Obviously, this tree is gonna to have to go in a second, but we're not gonna to worry too much about that now. We're kind of rounding off this back area. Yeah, okay. So there's gonna be a little bit of space here for something too. I think we'll bring the wall around a little bit like that. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna meet the curve of the path a little bit more. Okay, I think we're pretty much done outlining this section. Let's take a quick look at it from the air if we can, because that'll give us a bit more 
perspective on things. And yeah, no, I really like that. This kind of like L-shaped section here is going to be fantastic. We're going to build some nice buildings up here. I think it's going to be great. I need to get more stone. I think I'm actually out of smooth stone right now. If we're going to be paving this whole thing over. Oh, I really like that. I really like that now. It's starting to come together, especially with these extra little pops of color in here with the market stalls. I think that's going to be definitely worthwhile. Now, let's see. We'll put some... Yeah, I'll put some more stone and stone bricks down here. And I'm just going to cover over this area for now. Like I said, we'll probably light it up now and fill it in later. It's probably the sensible thing to do anyway. Okay, I'm just about done filling this in. I haven't gone with the stone brick the whole way around because I know I'm just going to end up building on some of this anyway. But I guarantee next time I go down there, there's going to be some sort of mob down there. I'm not sure what it'll be, but I'm sure I will encounter something. So I'm going to grid this up a little bit with torches because we don't have any kind of means of lighting this place up yet until we know what we're going to build here other than these torches and the torches are definitely going to help keep the place a little bit mob free for now i think this is this is probably a large scale operation that i will need to go and do sometime soon is just go and torch up basically everywhere i can around here to make sure that we're not going to get too many mob spawns up here obviously on the slabs and stuff it's not too much of a concern but large open areas like this are mob traps and i don't want the creepers ruining any of my hard work so yeah well we need to make a few more of these because i've been spamming them a whole lot in this episode already but now we've got this area in place let me take another quick look at it from the air with all of this filled in because yeah <laughs> that's starting to feel like a section of a city now it's got some infrastructure in place it's got some walls it's got this nice paved area and i can definitely imagine us laying down a few little houses up here maybe maybe the type of places where it's like a shop on the ground floor but then the person who owns the shop lives above it and they're close to the inner city so they've got a little bit of money from their business but they need to keep that grind so yeah i think we'll put in a few kind of outlines of shops up here and i think this is going to be a really nice place to build in the long term maybe not have it too close to the edge on this side though maybe have it so that there is like a a wall up here and this place can be kind of, I don't know, maybe on a diagonal like that. No, it's not going to leave enough space for them to walk around. Hmm. Okay, squeezing some stuff in here is going to be a little difficult, but that's all part of the challenge, I think. I kind of like that. I like that as a footprint. It's abstract, but that's kind of what we're going with here. Now, let's, let's add in a couple of other places next to it. And once again, the wall is kind of informing where we're going to be building some of this stuff. Let's take the bed and the shulker boxes out of the way so we can see a little bit better how much space we're working with. Yeah, we'll need to replace some of these torches as well because this place is going to get real dark at night. Let's move this along here. And yeah, these brightly colored materials obviously are a kind of placeholders for now, but they might even end up going into what each of the designs for this place ends up like. Like we might end up using some more brightly colored stuff to kind of make these things pop out. Probably not as bright as lime green concrete, but you know, some of these places could do with a little pop of color. Like the way we've got the red terracotta kind of popping out inside of the blacksmith's guild. It's not that noticeable from the outside, but when you look on the inside, you see it. And I think that's going to be kind of nice to include stuff like that in here. Just little hints and accent colors and stuff like that are really going to make these buildings kind of pop out a lot more. And one thing I'm learning in this process is that this section does need a few more staircases going up to it because going up there and then coming around here every single time is getting a little bit tedious, but I fall off this wall far more often than I should. It's just me being a little clumsy more than anything else. Now let's put in another quick wall here, and yeah, I think we'll have to keep a little bit of pathway around here. So we'll bring this wall back and then maybe end it about there at the at the outside because once people walk down off of this they're going to want to either go straight forward or that way if we have a couple of like awnings over the top of this little canopies for the shops and stuff then that's probably going to stick out above the players heads but they're still going to have room to move around down here and yeah i think we'll probably yeah if anything it can come out to the maximum about there so we still have a little bit of a little bit of walk-in room on this side you know what yeah i think that's i think that's pretty good i think that's as good as we're gonna get for the footprints of this place without you know <laughs> without actually starting to build up some of the foundations of these buildings so again one quick look from the air before we wrap up this episode because this place is going to pop with color now yeah there we go all right <laughs> it's looking a little bit like a little bit playroom colors right now because of these how bright these colors are but you know what i think we're really going to make this place work i think actually having some of these places marked out is really going to be good for the vibe of the town and we'll be able to do a little bit more infrastructure work here and there to make things pop out so i hope this has given you a little bit of inspiration as to how you can start planning some of this stuff out in your worlds don't forget to use a little bit of height all that 
often I find that people tend to flatten out an area where they plan to build and just completely level it before they build a town, but then the town feels almost sort of lifeless. It doesn't have these quirky little touches that feels like they've worked with the terrain and worked with different height and kind of raised up sections of the town to create cozy little spaces like the courtyard that we've got here with our market stalls we're going to put in. I think this is all going to turn out pretty great. So yeah, hopefully that's been useful for you guys. I hope you've learned a little bit about how I like to plan cities that you can use for your own structures and your own builds. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.